In this video, I'm gonna review the difference between a handyman business versus a full general contractor. Hey everybody, I'm Mike Claudio, owner of WinRate Consulting and host of the Big Stud Podcast. I repeat, host of the Big Stud Podcast. I talk to people all the time that don't realize I actually have a podcast. Big Stud, search it on Spotify, Apple, whatever, subscribe, listen, there's 100 episodes at this point. Go enjoy it, love it, appreciate you, leave a good review. Awesome. Uh, but today, talking about the difference between a handyman business versus a full general contractor. I think there's some obvious things on the front, right? Handyman is typically, you know, that DIY, honeydew list, small, short, quick projects. General contractor is typically viewed as somebody doing bigger, more comprehensive project style um, projects for their clients. But there's a few underlying things I think is super important to point out. One is the customer perspective. When clients reach out to a handyman versus a general contractor, the handyman is typically viewed as, I want to call a handyman, it's going to be a lower cost option. So understand that going in. If you are a handyman or have handyman in your business name and you're trying to level up your project size, it's going to be difficult because of the client perspective. Not anything you've done, not your skill set, not how good you are communicating, but strictly the name is going to put a perception into the client's eyes that says this person is going to be less expensive. Vice versa, once you get to general contractor, expect that people are expecting you to be more expensive. So when you go into that world, head it off right away. Understand that there's things that go into that and understand that that is the perception because you have done more and you have had to accomplish more and it costs more to do and run a general contracting business. One of the other key things I think is important is that most handymen have to have personal skill sets with their hands. Um, because it's typically a one man, two man show. You're not typically running a team of subs. On the general contractor side, I know plenty of general contractors who have never constructed a thing in their life on their own. They're just really good people managers and business owners and leaders. And they basically got their license and then just managed subs. They're just going about, you know, having conversations, bringing in the right people, bringing in the right skill sets and all that kind of stuff helps them bigger projects, more money, also, bigger risks, bigger mistakes, bigger issues, more cost, more overhead. This person, not much overhead, handyman, not much overhead, might have a truck, might have a couple trucks, might have some tools, but completely different cost of doing business. There is a huge step in overhead from handyman to general contractor, not just in the cost of doing business like the overhead, but also the knowledge necessary to get there. You have to be have licensing, you have to be able to pass tests. You have to have a certain income or, uh, bank account levels uh, based on the Carolinas. Um, every state's different. Like Texas, no licensing. There is no such thing as a general contractor's license. You just need a business license, so a little bit different there. Um, but the handyman to GC, especially say in the Carolinas and many of the other states that have full licenses for the general contractors, it allows you to do bigger projects. Like legally, there are limits to how big of a project a handyman can do, how big of a project an initial GC to do, and how big of a project an, uh, an unlimited general contractor can do. So understand that, you know, how where you play in that. And if you cross over those lines, no one's gonna come checking on you, but if something goes wrong, you can get in pretty big trouble for that. So make sure that you understand that if you wanna start leveling up, you've been running a good handyman business, and you wanna start doing $100,000 kitchen remodels, well, you can't pull the permits in most states that need it to be able to get the right inspections done. And also clients in that price point are typically looking for someone who's fully licensed and insured, uh, so make sure that you have that. But the cost of doing all that, of getting the licensing, keeping the licensing, getting all the insurance, and ultimately running a bigger business costs more money, which inherently does make you more expensive, but a lot of times you can actually make a higher profit margin as a handyman because you're not charging that much different, but your overhead is significantly lower. And kind of the last, and ultimately what I think is one of the biggest differentiators between a handyman and a general contractor is most handymen I know don't want to work 60, 70 hours a week. Most general contractors I know only work 60, 70, 80 hours a week. One of the benefits of the smaller projects is you can get in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, knock out four or five projects, make your five grand, six grand, seven grand, and take the rest of the weekend off. And you can run every week like this. A general contractor, because there's longer projects, more involved, more people, more headcount, more paperwork, um, you don't have that luxury. You can't just work a couple days a week and then go hunting that weekend every week. 
Um, so you're, you're a little bit more tied to the business here until you build a business and have employees that can run everything and you, you've earned the right to step away. A handyman, because the projects are so much smaller, you can get two, three, four, five done in a day, but also you have to go sell two, three, four, five more per day, where a general contract might only be able to sell two or three projects that'll last them a month. A handyman needs to sell probably 30 to 40 projects a month to be able to keep his schedule busy. So those are two really big things. The smaller projects compared to the bigger projects, the freedom of a handyman to just kind of work when he wants, not work when he doesn't want, plan his schedule a little bit differently because the client projects are shorter. The general contractor doesn't have that much freedom. So understand which side of that you want to be on. If you're a handyman right now saying, should I become a general contractor? Two questions. How much freedom do I want to have? And how much more can I do working with my hands? You're probably aging out. You're probably tired. Your probably body's broken down. Becoming a general contractor allows you to manage other people to do the work as opposed to you doing it with your hands. Again, comes with some downside of less freedom, um, but you're not working with your hands anymore, which can be very beneficial. So those are a few things I think are super important. Understand the difference between a handyman business versus a full general contractor business. Every state's gonna be a little different. I don't know all the state's nuances and all the different things. So disclaimer, if you don't know the difference in your state, call somebody, find somebody in your state. Typically there's a licensing board or somebody around that you can ask a question of what's the biggest differences. Please do that. I don't know all of it. I don't know every state and their differences. Those are the typical standard differentiating factors between those two types of businesses. Again, I'm Mike Claudio, owner of Woodenry Consulting, host of the Big Stuff Podcast, and I look forward to helping you win.